I worked for a corporation for a few years and I reported the sexual harassment that was going on and I got terminated. It's wrong. When I found out that my husband was being sexually harassed by our boss, I was destroyed. It ruined, in one day, everything was gone. My life changed. It was, I lost my job, I lost my marriage. I went to work every day for a major multi-billion dollar corporation and they want to tell me I have no rights to complain of sexual harassment or anything that is fair to anybody else if I'd worked at a different company. It, it's wrong. My advice to other employees that work for Native American casinos is before you go there to research the law that you don't have the rights as you would if you worked for another corporation in America. Just know that when you go to work it is a different country and your rights aren't there. You're not entitled. I went to do something that was right to my HR and I was terminated. That shouldn't have happened. And now I want my fight to make a difference where nobody else has to go where I went. say to America is be true to what you said on paper. If I lived in China or even Russia or any totalitarian country, maybe I could understand some of these illegal injunctions. Maybe I could understand the denial of certain basic First Amendment privileges because they haven't committed themselves to that over there. But somewhere I read of the freedom of assembly. Somewhere I read of the freedom of speech. Somewhere I read of the freedom of press. Somewhere I read that the greatness of America is the right to protest far right. Title VII of the Civil Rights Act of 1964 prohibits employers from discriminating against applicants and employees on the basis of race, color, religion, sex, and national origin. It also prohibits employers from retaliating against an applicant or an employee who asserts his or her rights under the law. Title VII prohibits discrimination in all terms, conditions, and privileges of employment, including hiring, firing, compensation, benefits, job assignments, promotions, and discipline. Title VII makes it illegal to harass someone on the basis of a protected characteristic, race, sex, and so on. The U.S. Equal Employment Opportunity Commission enforces Title VII. In the United States, persons of Native American descent occupy a unique legal position. On the one hand, they are U.S. citizens and are entitled to the same legal rights and protections under the Constitution that all other U.S. citizens enjoy. But on the other hand, although Native Americans enjoy the same legal rights as every other U.S. citizen, they also retain unique rights in such areas as hunting and fishing, water use, and gaming operations. Although Indian reservations are deemed sovereign states, both Congress and the U.S. Supreme Court have placed limitations on their sovereignty, 
Therefore, as specific issues arise about tribal court jurisdiction, the federal courts must intervene to decide these cases. In recent years, gaming has become one of the most important areas of economic development for Native American tribes. Since 1979, when the federal courts ruled that tribal-sponsored gaming activities were exempt from state regulatory law, the Indian gaming industry has grown tremendously with more than 200 tribes operating gaming establishments. These operations have been extremely lucrative for the tribes running them. In 2008, the gross gambling revenues from Class II and Class III tribal gaming operations amounted to approximately $26 billion. Unfortunately, for hundreds of thousands of Americans, there are a few federal employment laws tribal employers don't have to worry about. Indian tribes, their governments, and their tribal enterprises are excluded from these acts. Today, the Insider Exclusive goes behind the headlines in civil rights discrimination, Stephanie Mastro's story, to examine how Benjamin Yormack, founder and managing partner, Yormack Employment and Disability Law, is seeking justice for Stephanie Mastro's equal opportunity rights in a classic whistleblower retaliation story. Stephanie's case is currently on appeal in the 11th Circuit Court. But Florida is in the more conservative 11th Circuit Court of Appeals. If this case was filed in the 9th Circuit Court of Appeals or the District Court for North Dakota, the case law there would mean a finding in favor of Mastro and prevent tribal sovereign immunity. The U.S. District Court for the District of North Dakota has held that Native American businesses are not exempt tribal businesses from Title VII claims by non-Native Americans. It is often argued by tribes that sovereign immunity should be applied to its tribal businesses because if immunity is not applied, the resulting financial loss would threaten the economic existence of the financially fragile tribes. However, the recent impressive economic successes of Native American tribes demonstrate that this argument is no longer valid concerning most tribes. And specifically, the Seminole tribe, which is a sophisticated business entity registered to do business in the state of Florida, operating at least seven casinos in Florida to provide gaming and entertainment services to the entire public with a predominant workforce of non-Native American employees. The Seminole tribe's businesses in the form of Florida casinos, which includes Seminole Casino Amakali, rake in a whopping $2 billion or more during the 2012-2013 fiscal year. The defendant also owns and operates the casino management companies at many of its casinos, with the vast majority of casino personnel being non-Native American. If the Seminole tribe was a private company, they would rank among Florida's largest and most profitable. The U.S. Equal Employment Opportunity Commission needs to combat employment discrimination at all levels of American society, including Native American businesses to eradicate employment discrimination. The EEOC is responsible for enforcing federal laws against employment discrimination. Today, hundreds of thousands of employees of Native American businesses may have unwittingly waived the rights provided to them under federal employment discrimination statutes. In fact, most non-Native American employees would not realize they were waiving certain rights by accepting a job at the casino and without being aware that they are forfeiting their rights, this waiver can hardly be considered knowing and voluntary. Nowhere do the Seminoles inform prospective employees, non-Native or Native alike, nor current employees, that it is not subject to any federal labor regulation and that it intends for the employees to have virtually no rights to ever seek damages for even the most egregious and offensive of employment decisions. Without being aware that they are forfeiting their rights, this waiver can hardly be considered knowing and voluntary. Because such an involuntary waiver of significant rights is prohibited by the Supreme Court, employment discrimination statutes should apply to tribally owned companies and tribes. Tribes should not be allowed to profit from non-Native American labor and then subsequently deny all liability stemming from their interaction with that workforce. 
This is the first insider exclusive investigative national TV special on this grave inequality being perpetrated on some Americans and is being broadcast specifically to alert all these employees that your federal employment discrimination rights may have been waived without your knowledge and to encourage Congress to remedy this very unfair and unjust situation 50 years after the passage of the 1964 Civil Rights Act to include all Americans under this act. Ben Yormack has earned the highest respect from citizens and lawyers alike as one of the best trial lawyers in Fort Myers, in Naples, in Florida, and in the United States. His goal is not only to get justice for his clients, but to make sure that everyone is treated with equal respect and dignity as guaranteed under the Constitution of the United States. He has seen many innocent and hardworking people become victims, and because of that, he is driven to fight for people who have been harmed by the willful or negligent actions of others. He has built a substantial reputation by consistently winning cases other law firms have turned down. His amazing courtroom skills and headline-grabbing success rate continue to provide his clients with the results they need and the results they deserve. This is the Insider Exclusive, live from Fort Myers, Florida. Cases and laws. Focusing just on plaintiffs in employment and disability cases. So that will encompass anything from discrimination to wage and hour to Family Medical Leave Act cases. All of those are very common. Today we are going to be discussing a case of the case of Stephanie Mastro. Tell our audience a little bit of what kind of case is this and a little bit about the facts of Stephanie. This is a particularly egregious case, uh, and a, an egregious violation by the employer. And it's one of my most compelling cases that I have. I felt horrible for Ms. Mastro when she came into my office. Her life had been ripped apart. Not only was her marriage in shambles, but she was unemployed as a result. And it's people like that that want to work, that work hard to earn a living for their family that I want to represent. Now, she worked at a casino, correct? Correct. She worked at Casino Immokalee here in Florida. Mm -hmm. She was a card dealer, correct? Yes. She was a card dealer at the Seminole Casino Immokalee. And what were the actual facts? She was discriminated against how? And by whom? And what was the result of her bringing this to the attention of her HR department? Ms. Master was employed by Seminole Casino Immokalee as a card dealer, as was her husband. Her husband also worked there. Ms. Mastro began to suspect something was up between her husband and their, their boss. They shared a boss. An inordinate amount of time was being spent by her husband with the boss. There were meetings on casino property. And then there were all the text messages. Yeah. And it was once Ms. Mastro discovered the some 8,000 text messages between her husband and the supervisor that she realized the true extent of what was going on. And what was going on? It's believed that they were having. Astro found that out. She reported that to the casino's human resources department as she believed that she was reporting sexual harassment by the supervisor as to her husband and also was reporting it because it's a violation of company policy to be engaged in a sexual relationship uh, between coworkers. Um, what happened when she reported it? When she reported and corroboration from other individuals. The casino just blithely dismissed Ms. Mastro's allegations and instead terminated her. Terminated her? For what reason? For doing the right thing. For reporting what was going on in the casino. And they fired her because they knew that there was nothing that could be done, or so they think. That's when she came to you. That's correct. Seeking help. That's correct. She came, to, she came to my office in what I believe was one of her darkest hours. She was left without a job. 
uprooted and completely ripped apart by her husband's actions, mm -hmm. and now the actions of the casino mm -hmm. by terminating her. What were some of the immediate legal hurdles that you saw? The obvious hurdle is that the casino is owned by the Seminole Tribe of Florida, which traditionally enjoys what's called sovereign immunity from lawsuits. In essence, you can't sue the tribe or any tribal business, and that's the hurdle that we're facing. Specifically, we're talking about the tribal business is exempt from the majority of the Civil Rights Act of 1964, correct? That's correct. The Title VII of the Civil Rights Act of 1964 excludes an Indian tribe, a federally yeah. recognized Indian tribe. However, when that was enacted, tribes were financially frail. They needed that kind of protection. And this is uh, almost 50 years ago. Right? That's almost 50 years ago. Yeah. Today, if the Seminole Tribe of Florida was to be considered an employer, they would be Florida's largest. own seven casinos in the state of Florida, That's something correct. like that. They also own the brand name Hard Rock Cafe, correct? That's correct. What we've seen in the last few years is the tribes going from financially frail to financially and market. In fact, by buying the Hard Rock moniker and uh, licensing, they're no longer acting as a tribe. They're yeah. acting as American big business. Yeah. Now, there are thousands of employees that work for Native American gaming casinos in America. Every single one of these employees have the same thing in common, which is they do not have the same rights as you and I would have if we work for a non-Native American enterprise, correct? That's correct. What America doesn't know and what these employees don't know, when they set foot as an employee on that casino, yeah. they do not have rights federally or under state law. They have to pray that the tribe does the right thing on their own. So the tribe can discriminate against them racially, sexually, any number of ways, correct? That's correct. What happens is the tribe immediately claims sovereign immunity when yeah. a suit is being brought against them, mm -hmm. saying essentially, we're not subject to the laws of the United States or the states of the United States. Yeah. What a lot of people don't realize, even the customers can't sue the casino. Is that correct? That's correct. People that have slipped and fallen in a casino yeah. have brought suit and it's been dismissed. It's up to the tribe to settle those kind of claims. Injured on casino property. Mm. They seem much more inclined to settle as that would promote their financial end game. When an employee has brought a lawsuit, they'll claim sovereign immunity and it seems like now they're willing to fight it all the way up through the line, up yeah, to the Supreme now, Court. Your case. Criminal lawyers, they said that we're protected by sovereign immunity, correct? That's correct. The tri Seminole Tribe of Florida claims sovereign immunity in Ms. Mastro's case. And the U.S. District Court for the Middle District of Florida in July dismissed the lawsuit on tri tribal sovereign, sovereign immunity grounds. Yeah. This is only in the state of Florida, though, correct? Now your case is up before the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals. The case is right now still with the U.S. District Court okay. due to some confusion with the nature of whether the order issued was a final order or a non-final order. If it is a final order, I can file my notice of appeal yeah. and appeal Ms. Mastro's case the 11th. It was final. We think there might have been a typo. Yeah, there are other jurisdictions in the United States where the, that jurisdiction does not have the same line of thinking as this area, correct? That's correct. The Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals, which covers many of the western states, um, takes an opposite approach that Essentially, the tribe acting as big business has ceased to act as a tribe. Yeah. Now, there's another issue that we talked about before the show, which is this. If the employees are not made aware that they no longer have these same rights as employees of other companies working for non-Native American enterprises, should they be told this? And if they are not told this, is that a violation of the law? 
I think as a matter of public policy, they absolutely need to be made aware of this. Mm -hmm. If there's a slippery spot in the floor, we put up a sign. Yeah. When you enter a casino, there's no notice that you lose all of rights afforded to you under the Constitution and mm -hmm. the laws of the United States. And, the and there should be. There should be. Absolutely there should be. If you are going to waive your rights as an American citizen, those yeah. waivers should be knowing and voluntary. Yeah, and that's why we're doing this show, because we are going to alert everyone in the United States on this show that they are giving up some of their rights and not aware of it, right? That's correct. As well as employees. That's correct. Right? When you set foot on a tribal casino land, you lose your rights as an American citizen. Um, fortunately, we have Stephanie with us today, so we're going to bring her on the show right now. It is my great pleasure to introduce Stephanie Mastro to the show. Welcome to the show, Stephanie. Thank you. Take us back to those days. What is it about? Almost when you were fired by your employer, for what reason? Lack of integrity and falsifying phone records. But you and I both know this is not true, correct? Right. What really happened? About five months previously, five and a half months before I was terminated, my husband was spending a little too much time, I thought, with the big boss of the company. And that boss was your boss as well as his? Right. You're correct. both car dealers, right? Dual rate dealers. It's where you uh, dealt cards sometimes and then supervised yeah. sometimes. Uh huh. And what did you think was going on? I wasn't sure because he, she did promote him, and then he, therefore, he became my supervisor. And they just started spending time on the property. And she pulled him off the gaming floor, but he was. We worked together. So when he wasn't, you know, out with her, and he was home every night, it was just something I suspected at work. Mm -hmm. And I. He was, you know, 20 years we together, a wonderful, wonderful man. And your boss's, both your boss's name was Robin Serpas? Robin Serpas, yes. Serpas. Mm -hmm. You're on national TV today. What do you have to say to Robin Serpas? She destroyed two homes. She destroyed our family, and I don't know if her family is together, but I don't know how they could. I know she had her husband terminated as well. Tell us your opinion of your former employer. What do you think about them? I think that they hide behind. I don't believe the employer at the time had agreed to my termination. I believe it was very much the supervisory of Robin Surpass and the HR director, Patrick Kane. But for them now to know my case and see, you know, how horrible that they they've hired this management to do their to do their job, and to see what they've done. I think it's really horrible that they can't just say, we need to do something as a tribe. Yeah. We need to make things right. How has your life changed as a result of getting fired from your job and having your marriage dissolve? Everything's changed. I had the American dream. We had beautiful homes we built and cars and vacations and the beautiful kids. And now it's, you know, my 11 year old, he's having a hard time. You know, he, it's just a betrayal and I don't know, I have to stay in Florida. My daughter just turned 18, but she did get a full ride scholarship to the college here at 16 and I couldn't take that from her. So I've had a struggle to stay in Florida for her and find employment because there's no other casinos in Florida to work for. What advice do you give other employees that work at Native American casinos in light of the fact that you have learned that you don't have the same rights? Just go there knowing that you don't have rights to fight. You could be the best employee there ever is and be terminated for any reason, such as I was. And don't have any legal recourse, right? And have no legal recourse. Okay. I want to thank you so much for being on our show. We certainly hope your case is successful. Thank you. Thank you. You know, Ben, in these kinds of cases, what is usually the best? who is utilizing uh, sovereign immunity. The best strategy is to remain aggressive and lobby the court through sound legal logic Yes, that the law needs to be changed. And courts do change the law if you have a good argument, correct? That's correct. And interestingly, the U.S. District Court for the Middle District of Florida, despite dismissing 
Ms. Mastro's case, did make mention that she raises very important public policy arguments that may be meritorious. Yes. But the U.S. District Court is bound to follow case law of the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals, mm -hmm. which is, covers the state of Florida here. And essentially, that line of legal logic uh, holds that sovereign immunity would preclude Ms. Mastro's lawsuit. I want to thank you very much for being on this program. This case raises a very important issues, and we'd like to see them resolved in the favor of the right parties, namely your client and other people like them. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. You can get more information about our guests and the issues at InsiderExclusive.com.